Today we've got the DJI Mini 4 Pro versus the Active Track Gauntlet. Purchase DJI Care Refresh. Probably need that. Uh, this is a standard test that I use for all the drones to see whether or not they survive. Oh, tree! Oh, nay. The gauntlet's divided into basically four sections. The first section is this tree tunnel here. It's got to follow me through that whole mess. And then if it survives that, it gets to the next section, which is a bit more open, but uh, it's got its own little challenges to that. From there, we get into the high speed tracking section. And then following that, we get a section where we get to test out the new 360 feature and orbiting and all sorts of other cool, fun stuff. And if it survives all that without ending up in the drink, then we get to the bonus section, through the woods. Now it's worthwhile noting only one other DJI drone has survived the gauntlet. Uh, not the Mavic 3 Pro or the Air 3 or the Mavic 3, anything else for that matter, but rather its older brother, the Mini 3 Pro. However, the key feature on the Mini 4 Pro is ironically enough, it's a new 360 degree obstacle avoidance. You can see the two front sensors right there and there, and the two back sensors there and there. Those two sets of sensors basically give it full 360 degree coverage of what's around it to avoid obstacles. Okay, now there's one setting we need to check before we get going. We tap the dot, dot, dot in the upper right-hand corner there, and you'll see obstacle avoidance. There's bypass, breaker, off. Uh, by default, it'll be set to break, so it'll stop before it gets to something, versus we need to change it to bypass, which is what I did right there. You'll also see down below that there, there is the bypassing options. Uh, there's normal and nifty. Nifty basically means it's a little more risky with what it does. I haven't found like a huge difference in the grand scheme of things, to be honest. So we're just going to go with normal. Uh, and then display radar map is really useful because it allows you to see uh, what's coming up from an obstacle standpoint. Also on the controls menu there option, I like to check the subject scanning box because it then will see me as an object and allows me to tap me versus me drawing a square. But okay, with that all set, we're going to start off with the basic mode through the crazy tree tunnel here. I'm going to tap myself right there. There. I'm going to choose active track and then trace. Trace means to follow from behind, parallel means off to the side. Uh, we will start off with trace, but once we get about halfway down, there's a couple people there, we'll jet out to the side to clear things out. With that, we are ready to roll. And you can see down at the bottom, there's that option for which direction to come from. So we'll start right there for now. Clip in the pedals here. Come on, or not, we don't need that. So far, so good. We're into this. This is, by the way, further than the Air 3 made it just uh, a month or so ago. So that's a good sign right here. Come on, pedal clipping. Oh, we're not. Okay, I guess we're not doing pedal clipping in today. This is looking nice so far. Cruising along here. Nothing too crazy or too fast yet. We'll get to speed later on. Don't worry. One of the things you're seeing on the radar map there, those orange sections, those are basically highlights for obstacles. So I'm having to slow down now for it to keep up. Uh, you may be asking, well, can't you just toss it in a sport mode? The thing is, sport mode is not for sports like this. Sport mode is instead uh, for basically going fast without obstacle avoidance. Uh, now, I'm going to toss this off for the side right now. Normally, I would do this part automatically, but uh, there is someone coming, so I don't want to have them catch up here. Uh, and now we're going to go from the side. Move this down there. Active track, parallel, and go. Oh, in case you're wondering how I've got this mounted to the bike, uh, it's a mount for the controller in my phone. I've got a whole video on it up in the corner there, including like mountain biking and stuff. Um, or you can just see the Amazon link in the description there. It's like 20-ish or so bucks. Okay. Now I'm gonna pull this back a little bit so it doesn't hit these little tree branches right there. So it's just some tree branches. Uh, it's a little bit close. And what's cool about this mode is that it's out over this like open area right now. So it's got plenty of space to work with. So we should be able to get moving pretty quick here. So let's kick up this pace a little bit. And this is looking nice. This is so much better than both the uh, Air 3 and Mavic 3 Pro is doing. Like this is flawless right now. Come on, let's, how much faster can we go? We'll get to some true sprints out in the open. But there's someone coming, so I'm gonna stop. And I'm gonna go to trace mode. And from behind, where did it just go off to? Well, that was a move I did not expect. Good job, little buddy. Okay, it pulled that off. Ho oh, ho, I did not expect it to do that, but it did, holy cow. Good job, little guy. Okay, now it's from behind, and this is now part two. So it got through the tree tunnel, which is amazing because, again, most of the drones fail there. Scotty was really the only non-DJI drone that's passed us this in course, entire course. Uh, obviously, Scadio recently announced they're stopping making consumer drones. Really looking pretty right now. Uh, obviously, everything is looking great. And then up around the corner here, what's going to happen, we're going to get narrowed down a bit. And that's where I want to see if it'll track. I'm going to drop the altitude down. Ooh, 
little skid on that. Okay, there's someone up there. Uh, sorry, I've got like this massive chunk of grass in my wheel. One second, I gotta show you this. Just gonna pull this out real quick. Okay, now we're ready to roll and we're gonna bring it down nice and low. Okay, here we go. Got this side section, bring it down low. Bring it up a little bit more in front of me first. And then lower, come on, bring it down low. A little more in front of me. Well, that'll work for now. Okay, let's move. Oh, I just saw it tilt. What's cool here is that you can't see it tilt because the gimbals, man, this is looking awesome. I don't know exactly how fast I'm going right now. I'm gonna guess about 22 and uh, 25 miles an hour. So close to 40 kilometers an hour. You can see now I get the subject moving too fast. So moving a little too fast. You see it now switches behind me. That's what DJI drones in general do. When things get dicey and from a speed standpoint, they slide in behind me. Now, when I get out there, we can turn on sport mode and I can show you what it looks like once we, uh, make sure no one's here. Here comes a little a sneak test in the third segment through the tunnel. We'll do it. Will it do it? No, it's, it's properly confused. Yeah, I just, you, you missed me, dude. You flew right on past. We're here at the other end, ready to start the fourth section and in particular show you how the new 360 feature works. So I'm gonna go and tap myself right there and then go into actor track. And then we have trace and we're gonna press go. On the left hand side, you see this new like double dial situation. Essentially, it's telling you three things. Uh, number one is what direction do you want the drone to go? Number two is what altitude you want it to go. And then in the settings, number three being what height and distance you want to go from you. So if you look in the settings here, tap the dot, dot, dot in the corner, then under control, you'll see focus track settings. And you see here, there's two options. Uh, there's person and vehicle. We're gonna leave it on person for now. If I go to vehicle, basically it goes ahead and it just reduces some of the options you have right there. Uh, but going back to person right here, we have the outer circle and the inner circle. Uh, the outer circle is the height and max distance from me uh, versus the inner circle is the minimum distance from me. And I can adjust those down below there. The inner radius, the outer radius, the inner height, and it's in Chinese, uh, but the outer height, uh, hopefully they'll fix that. And then you can see camera motion, normal or fast. In my case, I've already changed it to fast. And then I can enable near ground flight to go below two meters, uh, about six feet or so. In my case, I'm not gonna do that right now. I could, this is a great scenario for it, but we're just gonna kind of keep things simple for now. So let's just go slow-mo so you can see how it's gonna work. I'm gonna say, I wanna start from behind low. Actually, there we go, like that. Start from high and go down to low to my right. And you can see it's now descending, going nice and slow right now and it's gonna descend down low to my right. This is cool, because in the past with action track, you could do orbits if you wanted to, but you couldn't really control it uh, dynamically like this without actually physically controlling the entire time, versus this is just gonna do it for you. Uh, so again, we can say, you know what? I wanna stay low this time, and just stay like on the low side of it, and go around me, like this. And I'm going really slow right now, uh, but we'll go fast, don't worry, in just a second. And you can see now it's orbiting around me uh, without any problems here. And it'll keep on going around me, all the way back to the other side. You see that green status of where it is. There we go. And then you can say, you know what? I want the next one to be from here up to the top and in front and just be right in front of me while going up high. And there we go. Now it's doing that. And that's super cool, right? And now it just stays there. So we can go now a little faster, reset. Now I'm gonna show you the POI orbit option. So if I go to POI here, you can see go. And I'm gonna speed it up. And I'm just gonna go slow at first here. I want you to see this. It's having no problem doing this, but watch as I speed up, just gradually increasing. It kind of hesitates on the turn there, which is fine, but it's gonna struggle when it gets in front of me. It's gonna struggle to pull off that orbit. Oh, you're doing good this time, wow. Usually you struggle. Well done, little guy, okay, fine. Try now, come on, what are you waiting for? Come on. Oh yeah, it's over. So let's give it sport mode, which removes obstacle avoidance. And nope, it's saying I can't make that turn around me. Oh, uh oh, oh, it's going for it. We'll get there before the end. Come on, come on. You can do this. You got trees, you got normal mode in about five seconds. Five, four, three, good job. Normal mode, Wah! turn. 
And now the tough part, it's got to orbit through these trees. Whoa, though. Where do you go, little guy? Oh, oh, there it is. It's got me. Oh, I thought I had it. All right, the tree had it. There we go, through the trees. Vroom. That was close, holy cow. Come on, pull it off again. You got this. Do what your bigger, more expensive drones can't do. It's thinking. It's gonna shoot the gap right now. There we go. Woo. <laughs> there we go, that's a big tree. Good job. Well done. Come on, do it one more time. There we go. Finding the gap, finding the gap. It'll go right there, I bet. Oh, it's hesitating. Thinking about his poor life choices. Oh, I thought I lost it. Signal dropped out for a second. Come on, go out, go out, go out. Come on. There, oh, oh, no, no, it's like, no, 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 no. Oh, I'm gonna go. We'll catch back up. Come on. Failed attempt, I'm going slow now, but. Come on. There we go. Jeez, that was close. Um, this is the, the mini I'm, oh, tree. Oh, nay. I was just gonna say, this is the mini I know and love. And then, found a tree. The, the mini I'm all tree. Oh, nay. Okay, so just for record, this be the tree. I'd say it's a pretty obvious tree in the grand scheme of trees. There is zero wind out here. You can see by the leaves, basically not moving. I know there's technically wind because of the windmills, but there's, there's like no wind. And let's check the drone out. A little bit of grass, a little bit of greenery to give it some flavor. I think you're good, little buddy. Let's get you back up in the air. Happy little guy. I'm not sure if he's happy, but uh, he's there. It's now time for the fifth bonus round. Some off-roading sections. We're just going to see what's going to happen. Okay, little guy. Can you do this? I'm just going to go slow. I'm not going to like try to fly through here fast because obviously it's not going to work. But this is just, you know, cruising through here like a trail runner would do in the trails. Obviously this is, you know, wide enough that I can fit through, uh, but eh, it's doing a good job. Like again, the, the Air 3 and the Mavic 3 series, all of them that I have, uh, not a single one could do this section here. Um, so well done, DJI, you're, you're getting this figured out. Still not Skydio, but well done. And this should pop us out onto the avenue of the tree tunnel. So we'll get moving out there. We got someone coming. You know what? You succeeded. So let's go back through again. Too many people out there right now. Let's see if it'll figure this out. It's got to turn around and not lose me in the process. Come on, drop down. Very impressive. Well done. Okay, it's dropping down. Good job. Again, I'm not going super fast right now in here. Uh, the reality is that when you get that uh, obstacle sensor stuff like that right there, that reduces the speed automatically. So the way the uh, radar map works is when you see that, it starts reducing the speed to avoid the situation. Okay, now we've got the tree tunnel going back. Uh, we're gonna throw it out to the side now and see how well this works. It's interesting, it won't throw out to the side though when there's something in the way. Oh no, this is not gonna end well. Oh, holy moly, don't go back up into it. No, 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 no. Oh, not again. Oh, that was a bad one. That fell from the top of the trees. That fell from way up there this time. Okay, overall, you know, some dirt, um, some mud, a little bit of case poppage right there, but nothing we can't fix the quick snap. I think we're still good. <laughs> The second time, uh, I'm not sure what happened there. Like that was weird. I don't know why it ascended like that. It's not, we don't have anything else going on. So that's, that's odd. So that's impressive. Uh, that drone just fell from a very high height uh, and it is, it's happy. I mean, I'm not sure if it's happy, but it's, it's alive. Oh no, third time down. That's a good example of the challenges of ActorTrack. So that little branch that you see still moving right there, that's very, very thin and it simply can't see that. Uh, it is what it is. If this was still summer and that had stuff on it, it'd be probably fine. Um, you can see it's closed its little wing, but again, <laughs> I think it's fine. Uh, third time, still happy. 
Now, I want you to stay out there, little drone, and let's go fast. With the trees in between, so the slot, 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 tracking it. It's not in sport mode right now, it's in regular mode, but it's got a full, like, emptiness over there. So, if I turn this around so you can see what it's doing, you can see it's over there hanging out, and I'm in here. And all it's gotta do is fly above that section there to see me, which is super cool. Now we're gonna slow it down up here at the end. Hopefully it won't go flying away from me. Okay, we're back. Okay, so where do we stand overall with ActiTrack and the Mini 4 Pro? Uh, well, first off, when it comes to durability, like kudos there, I actually filmed another section. I was just trying to get a better thumbnail uh, and it also hit a tree again there. Oh no, that's a bad one. Directly onto the concrete, this slam down. Good job, little guy. I took off again, no problems at all. Uh, when it comes to tracking, that's divided into two camps. Does it track me well? Uh, and the answer is yes, it tracks me well. It did not like lose me in most scenarios. Uh, it did a good job there, except when I went too fast. When there was obstacles around me and it couldn't keep up that speed, then it would lose me, uh, which is something the Scania generally doesn't. But then the third one is obstacle avoidance. Uh, and that's trickier. And I think one of the things I'm realizing here is that with DJI's new, basically slanted obstacle avoidance sensors, like you see right there, that try to have that 360 degree view, they're actually not as good at avoiding those obstacles that are straight in front of it. Uh, if I look at the Mini 3 Pro in the past, I never had it hit something direct on. I flew with a Mini 3 Pro a ton uh, in sports and it never hit something dead on. It was always at an angle when I was doing something stupid that it would crash. Compared to the Mavic 3 series and the Air 3 series also have these slanted obstacle avoidance sensors, I don't think they're as good. I think DJI is basically making a sacrifice to get that 360 degree obstacle avoidance in a smaller package, but it's still missing things from time to time, which which is why we see what we see right there. Hopefully over time they'll improve that, but uh, for now, I think as long as you're away from thin branches in the fall, winter, etc., you're probably just fine. Anyways, I've got plenty more Mini 4 Pro goodness coming up, real world testing, how it actually works. Then stay tuned, I've got a full beginner's guide coming up. I've got some wind testing. It's supposed to get spicy this weekend. Uh, so again, lots of good stuff in the pipeline. Have a good one.